Morning, mates. Miss Kinnell told me you'd be working with patterns, so I'm going to be doing some patterns today. And just to make it more interesting, let's do some dividing in fractions and decimals. So I'm going to start with one with a decimal. If this here marker wants to work, apparently it's not. They can walk the plank. We'll get another marker. Arr. All right, I'm starting with the number two. And to make it interesting, I'm going to be subtracting one half, also known as zero decimal five. So our first term is two. If we subtract zero decimal five, also known as five tenths, I'll have one decimal five, known as one and five tenths. That's our second term. And then I subtract five tenths again. And I will be left with one and zero tenths. And that's our third term. And I subtract five tenths again. And I have zero decimal five. If you think about it, it's like having two dollars to start with. And then I take away 50 cents and I'm left with a dollar and 50 cents. And then I take away another 50 cents and I'm left with a dollar. And I take away another 50 cents and I'm left with 50 cents. And I can keep adding these here zeros as many times as I want because really, Zeros at the end of a number in the decimal side just really mean it's more uh, accurate to that place that level. It's the same number two here or a two like this is the same thing. This is like two dollars, a dollar fifty, a dollar fifty cents. That's number four. Then I take away another fifty cents and I'm left with zero. Shiver me timbers, I'm out of money. That would be number five. And then we can keep going because maybe I owe a bloke some money. Now, if I take away five tenths of a dollar, again, I'm left with negative zero decimal five or negative five tenths. That would be number six. And we can keep going because patterns just keep going forever. If I take away another decimal five or five tenths, our seventh term would be negative one decimal zero, also known as negative one, or like I'm in the hole a dollar. And we can keep going. If I take away another zero decimal five or five tenths, I'm at the eighth term now. And I've got negative one decimal five, also known as one and five tenths, or a negative a dollar fifty. At least with me and pirates, money, you can think about money makes it make more sense. We'll do it one more time. For our ninth term, did everybody see that all right? If I took away another decimal five, We'd be at negative two decimal zero zero, or two and zero tenths, or just two dollars. So we would take go start all the way over here at two, a dollar and fifty cents, a dollar fifty cents is zero, negative fifty cents. I forgot the other zero. Negative a dollar, negative a dollar fifty and negative two dollars. Or if you wanted to say it in fancy math terms, we'd have two and zero tenths, one and five tenths, one and zero tenths, zero and five tenths, zero and zero tenths, negative five tenths, negative one and zero tenths, negative one and five tenths, and negative two and zero tenths.
Man, that was invigorating. Let's do one more. Let's do a little division, shall we? As a pirate, I'm not into division so much because it means dividing, and I don't like sharing. But for math, I guess I'll have to do it today. Let's start with the number two again. That'll be our first term. And for this one, we'll divide by two, also known as multiply by one half. Multiplying by a half and dividing by two is the same thing. Sometimes it makes it think may make more sense in the head if I think multiply by a half. All right, so if I multiply by a half, also known as divide by two. Two divided by two is going to be one, or two times one half will give me two over two, or one as well. That's my second term. Then if I do that again, divide by one half, or multiply by, divide by two, or multiply by one half, I get one times one half. One times one is one, one times two is two, which means I just get a half. Notice how these halves are just, it's two, one, one half. Wonder what will be our next fraction. Our fourth term, one half times one half. One times one is one, two times two is two, it's a fourth. We can keep drawing pictures of this too to show what's going on. First, I'd have two full circles shaded in. Then I'd have one circle shaded in. It's half of two. And then I'd have half of a circle shaded in. Then I'd have a quarter of a circle shaded in. Notice it's getting smaller by halves each time. Multiplying by a half is like dividing by two. We go to our fifth term. One fourth times one half. One times one is one. Four times two is eight. In me picture now, I'll draw fourths first, and then I'll cut those in half, and I'm just sheeting in one little piece there. So we've got two, one, one half, one fourth, one eighth, and we can do it another time. Our sixth term would be one eighth times one half. One times one is one, and eight times two is 16. If I were to draw me a picture this time, I'd find fourths, and then I'd find eighths, and then I'd have to cut those in half again. These are gonna be tiny pieces. And I shaded just one little sliver of one little piece. It's like if me buddies and I were splitting up the treasure between multiple of us. The more people, the less I get, which I don't like. So we go two, one, one half, one fourth, one eighth, one sixteenth, and so on for our terms. Whee, that tired me out. So at home today, mateys, you can be doing decimal patterns and fraction patterns. It'd be good practice for you because it's good for you to be knowing how to be using math in your real lives. And for me, it's like counting money when I'm using decimals. And when I'm doing fractions, it's like splitting up money and sharing with folks when I'm using fractions. And if you don't practice math today, I'll make you walk the plank.